In this video, we're going to talk about the workflow taking a design from Blender and into Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about the reverse of what we've already covered. We've already discussed taking a design from Fusion 360 and bringing it into Blender using OBJ, STL, FBX, and so on. So converting a 3D design or a B-Rep into a mesh body and bringing it into a polymodeling program like Blender. But the discussion has, has come up recently. I was talking to somebody and really it, it brought to light a different workflow that I hadn't really considered covering in uh, any of these videos. But I really do think that it does shed some light on a potential workflow. And what I mean is going from a poly modeling program like Blender, Cinema 4D, Maya 3D Studio, and taking that design into a CAD package like Fusion 360. Now, Fusion 360 is kind of a, a bit of a hybrid because we have sub-D or subdivided modeling with the T-spline forms. And you can get this with SolidWorks using things like NPower's Power Surfacing add-in. We are using these poly modeling approaches with subdivided models, but ultimately you're creating a B-Rep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Blender to get started and you can follow along if you want, but you can also just watch the video and understand the process. We're gonna do a relatively simple example, so nothing too complicated, but I'm gonna get started in Blender with the default uh, cube camera and light that gets created. This is not going to be an all-encompassing how to use Blender tutorial. It's really going to look at the general process. So I'm going to get started by first deleting the light and the camera. And then I also want to take a look at this cube. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to change to a face selection. And I'm going to select a few of these faces and I want to delete them. So we can do this by deleting faces. We can dissolve faces. But in this case, I actually want to delete them. And I, what I want to do is I want to leave behind a shell, a surface. We're going to do the same thing over here, noting that you can hit delete on the keyboard or you can hit X by default. All right, so now I have these two right here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tab to get out of my edit mode. I'm going to go over to my modifiers once I select my body and I'm going to subdivide this. So we're gonna subdivide it with, let's say three, and we can do the render, it's not gonna matter in this case, but we'll do a subdivision of four and uh, we're gonna apply that. So we're gonna say apply, which now means if we hit tab and we go into edit, you can see that we have a much finer resolution mesh. Now that I have this, I'm gonna to go to file and select export. Now, when we look at our options, if you're coming from Fusion 360 or any other CAD platform, you typically would export something as an intermediate format, like an IGES or a step file or Parasolid. We don't really have that option. We have STL, FBX, OBJ, and these are really gonna be the three main ones that we're gonna talk about. Now, I'm not gonna go into STL and FBX. I'm really gonna take a look at OBJ in this example, but note that there are nuances between these various mesh files. So I need to pick a location I'm gonna save it in a folder that I have for Fusion 360 exports, and I'm just gonna leave it as untitled, and I'm gonna export that. Next, we need to hop into Fusion 360, and there are a couple things that we need to think about here. If we try to simply upload that, I'm gonna select the file and I'm gonna find it. So when we try to upload a design, you need to locate where you saved it, in this case, untitled OBJ, and I'm gonna to try to upload this. Now, there are actually two different ways that we can do this. When we upload a design that comes from an intermediate format in Fusion 360, by default, capture design history will be turned off. So it doesn't matter if it's an IGES or a step file or whatever it is, any of those defaults will come in with history off. So you see at the bottom, we have no history. It's important that we turn that on, especially if we wanna capture any design history. Now the body that we brought in is a mesh body and it's gonna give us a warning because it's not closed, that's fine. It doesn't really matter in this case. But now we have a mesh that we can work with. We can go to the mesh workspace, we can play around with it. We can also use the insert mesh option and that will allow us to find a mesh body. You will notice that something interesting happens here. 
And the fact that it's not scaled the same, and that's because by default in Blender, we're gonna be working with meters. And when we try to import something like this and you pick a different unit, it, it is really important that we do understand the difference between what we're bringing in and what we started with. Now, for this example, it doesn't really matter. Um, the scale of it, it's, it's not really important. But just note that we have those two different methods of bringing these mesh bodies in, just simply importing it or by using the mesh tools to insert mesh. Now, that, that's not actually the focus of what we're doing. It's just a quick tangent to talk about how we get the mesh into Fusion 360. The important bit here is now we're going to create a form. Now, when we use form bodies, you'll notice that the mesh bodies here are still visible. Those, they still have warnings on them because they're not closed. It doesn't matter for what we're doing. But the mesh body itself is still visible. We do have a utility that can try to convert a mesh body directly to a T-spline body. Now, this is great, but it only works if we have a quad mesh. So if we started with a quad mesh, then we would have the available option for us to simply convert it directly. So this is where it's really handy to be working in Blender and um, have control over what the mesh is. So in Blender, you have the option to triangulate the mesh. If you're trying to bring it into a CAD program, that's, that's not what you want. In this case, you'll notice that we were very successful in just converting that mesh body into a T-spline. Now we can come in and we can make changes. So for example, if I go to edit form, if I take a look at my selection options, I can grow or shrink my selection very easily. I can use soft modification. And this is a great example for it because now we can determine the extent of the soft modification if I want to affect a certain amount of the design. So in this case, rectangular face count, I might want to increase that. Um, increase or decrease the rectangular face count in different directions to influence it more. Uh, we can also use the distance value. In this case, let's set it to five millimeters. And what this means is as I start to manipulate this, it's going to have a drastic effect anywhere these vertices are red as they start to transition to pink and white and we get to the area where there are no highlighted vertices, it's not going to affect the design at all. So soft modification allows us to bring something in and make those adjustments very easily. Uh, so there are some similar tools in Blender that we could use, but again, this is, a, this is a methodology that we can use here. Now that we understand how to bring a mesh in, knowing that if it's a quad mesh, we can directly convert it to a T-spline body, and we can finish the form, and now we have what's considered a B-rep. So this B-rep is a clean CAD surface. It's not tessellated like you would uh, get if you were trying to convert a mesh body directly to a surface. And let's take a look at that. So if we have this mesh body, and we want to try to use the modify and the option to convert a mesh, we can select this. We have a couple different methods. We can create it with a parametric mesh or base feature. This basically means it's a um, a direct modeling feature and it doesn't have any history. That's a very basic sort of definition of it. There's a little bit more to it. And then we have the methodology to create a faceted body or to try to create a prismatic body. Now I will note that this prismatic option works great if you have a true prismatic part, something that's extruded, doesn't have a lot of curvature. In some cases, you'll note that this will actually end up failing and you might crash fusion. So this is fairly new, this paramesh and some of these conversions are fairly new to Fusion 360. So just be careful with that. If you're trying to create some sort of prismatic body, that's fine. If you're trying to do something like this, um, just note that it might fail and it might crash on you. So we're gonna do the faceted option. We're gonna say, okay. And note that now we have a surface body, but this looks a whole lot different than the version that we got from our T-spline, right? So we have a faceted body. It's made up of a ton of triangles. And in Fusion 360, you can actually select these edges. And in some cases, if you're working in surface and uh, solids, we can actually delete these edges and try to have it patch. It's not gonna work for a mesh conversion like this. We are essentially left with this body. If I hide the edges, you can see here that we have a lot of little triangles. If we show the converted B-rep, 
you can see that that is nice and clean. And we show the edges, all we're seeing is the boundary. This is one continuous face, one surface. The other one is made up of 1,024, which makes sense based on the subdivision level that we did. We took something that originally had two faces and we divided it up uh, four different times. So that, that is an exponential difference of the number of faces that we're dealing with. So there's one more thing that I do wanna mention here. There's another workflow that we should understand and consider because this is not a one size fits all problem, right? I mean, the input that you have, the mesh body that you're starting with is gonna have a drastic effect on how well this process works. We've already taken a look at just bringing the mesh into Fusion. It's pretty straightforward. We can do it in the mesh workspace or we can just simply open it in the data panel. We took a look at converting that to a T-spline body. And if you have a quad mesh, it, it's a fairly seamless process usually. I should note that there are limitations to the number of faces. So if you have a really detailed model on a large number of faces, then it's probably not going to work. This is, this is, again, it's a simple example. But the third option that we have is to actually start creating our own. I'm gonna do this by just creating a plane. I'm gonna make a fairly small one over here. I'm gonna select it. Actually, let's go this way, select it all. Uh, I'll just select it here. And then we're gonna move it into place. We're gonna rotate it around and we're gonna start manipulating it. So the way that this is going to work is we can use modify and we have options to pull this down to a mesh or to match a surface. In this case, if we are going to use the auto projection, we're gonna select these vertices and note that it's starting to push it directly to the mesh. Now, this isn't perfect because it does take, uh, it takes some liberties when you're trying to make this work. So if you're trying to build something like this, my suggestion is first to get it relatively close to where you want it to be. In this case, let's go ahead and just pull this over. Um, I'll select this one here, pull this one down. And then we want to take all of these and I'm gonna go ahead and select this face as well and we'll pull it over. So now let's try again. Let's try to go to pull. We're gonna select these vertices and note that it pushes it or pulls it down to the mesh. So if we had a large enough number of subdivisions, then we would be able to work with this. Now, there are some inherent problems here. For example, if I go to modify and move this around, it's not attached to the mesh surface. So while it does work, you kind of have to get pretty close and then you can start um, you know, building that shape. We also have the option to create faces. We can turn on object snap and we can try to begin building these these different polygons, uh, trying to keep to four-sided again, and go ahead and just build this out over here. And note that there are different options here when you're doing this. Uh, we could do the edge option. But this the snap option, at a first glance, it appears to be snapping to the mesh. If we're gonna go ahead and just build out some four-sided patches, do the same thing here. We'll just we'll just build a couple just for this example, and I'm going to carry this one over here as well. All right, so that methodology of creating these faces allows us to directly snap that to this mesh reference. So using object snap allowed us to do that. Now this process can be time consuming, and there are ways that we can we can do this a little bit quicker. Um, you know, so we can use these different methods. If you're gonna use this tool, you should plan ahead accordingly because it does take a bit of time to get used to. I'm gonna go ahead and use this other methodology, this, this edge using object snap. And you'll notice that when I do this, it's, it's gonna start building off of the other edge. So you can see here, I already have an edge and I'm sort of building down. Depending on, again, what you're working with and how you're building, one method may be quicker than the other. Both are honestly, they're very time consuming if you're trying to retopologize a uh, design this way. But that doesn't that doesn't go against the fact that we are now building directly on a mesh that we brought in. 
So these are the three main workflows. It's not to say that these are the only workflows, but these are the three main workflows that you will have when you're working with Fusion 360 and you're coming from a, a mesh file. It doesn't have to be from Blender, but just note that if we're working in Blender and we do have control over the mesh, in this case, if we can easily create a quad mesh out of something like this, that is gonna be a much easier transition for us to convert it into a form body without all the extra work. Keeping in mind that there are some major differences between Blender and Fusion and the methodology for how you would model something. In Blender, we have the ability to subdivide something as a modifier without actually doing that, right? So we can add a subdivision surface modifier we can increase the subdivision surfaces in the, uh, the viewport and for the render. And when we do that, we can smooth out a relatively low polygon mesh. That's not the case in Fusion. So when we're working in Fusion 360, the level of control that we have in a form body, that level of control is going to be this sort of box display and the conversion between that is gonna be the underlying surface that we get. So you can see here is our box display. This would be considered a low resolution poly or a low resolution mesh. And then it's automatically creating the curves using the math, the tangency and the direction of the control. And it's creating those curves and the smooth surfaces underneath. Now, I do wanna make another note, something I may have said in the other video. I think I mentioned class A surfacing and this is a topic that I've covered in a video before we did our forms mastery. I talked about the fact that we only have G0, G1, and G2 continuity, which are connected, tangent, and curvature based, and G3, which is the smooth transition. Um, I guess, sorry, Fusion calls G2 smooth, which is curvature based. G3 is where we have acceleration. So not only the direction of tangency, the amount of curvature at the connection, but also the rate of change or the acceleration going into and out of that. That level of surface control is just not available in really any CAD package. You need to go to a true surfacing package, something like Alias or Alias Auto, to get that level of control. It's just something that we kind of fake depending on the product that we're trying to make. So you can get pretty good, you can get pretty close, but just note that we don't actually have class A surfacing control in Fusion or in Inventor or in SolidWorks or in Solid Edge or in Onshape or whatever CAD package you decide to use. We don't really have that level of, con of control until you go to a true class A surfacing program. And in the Autodesk realm, which Autodesk makes Fusion 360, that is Alias. That's, that's the program that you would use if you were trying to make a curvature continuous class A surface with these modeling type tools. But at that point, hopefully this helps understand the workflow of going from a poly program into Fusion 360 and the three main ways in which we can do that. And just a quick recap, bringing the mesh in, we can upload it or we can insert it as a mesh using the mesh tools. And then from there, if it's a quad mesh with low enough face count, then we can directly convert it to a T-spline. If it's a triangular mesh, then we need to go the route of manually converting that. So that means creating a subdivided surface and snapping it to the mesh, or simply using the face tool and just drawing that automatically snap to the mesh and retopologizing it. If this is uh, of interest to anybody, then I can go into a more detailed example since we do talk about car parts and car bodies, maybe we can do a fender or a hood so we can see that process. But I think at this point, the, you have the general points of how to do this process. Every product is different and each one is gonna have its own challenge. So it's really hard to capture all of those in one video. But if you have any questions on what we talked about here, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.